Hello everyone, welcome back to Ansargari. So today we will take up questions related to data interpretation. So let's start with some of the practice questions. So again, these are not so complex. You have to just keep in mind the, the data that is given to you. You're properly taking down the figures and also specifically focusing upon what actually the question is asking because there will be several questions on again one graph that would be given like two to three questions on one graph so these are two major things before you start solving the question that you need to keep in mind like in this case it is uh, the data related to production of three types of tires for a company over the year and this, the figures are in terms of lakhs. So first the question is, what was the percentage drop in the number of C-type tires manufactured from 1993 to 1994? So focus on the year 1993 and 1994, C-type tire. So C-type is this empty space, which is shown here in the graph through this empty uh, bar diagram. And we have to calculate the percentage drop. So simply we'll use the percentage formula here. So drop in this case, you can see it is 30 here and it is 22.5. So you'll subtract them and we are comparing it from 1993. So we'll divide this with the figure of 1993, which is 30. So simply you will see 25% drop. So A option is the answer. Then what was the difference between the number of B-type tires manufactured in 1994 and 1995? So you just have to calculate the difference here between the number of B-type tires that were being manufactured. So in this 1994 and 1995, B-type is this wavy figure which you can see is here in the middle. So 27.5 is the value here and it is 22.5 so you just have to calculate the difference which will turn out to be 5 lakh so here the option is not given so it will be none of these so total number of all the three types of tires which are manufactured was the least in which of the following years so here for this firstly you will have to total the figures for all the three types of tires that are being manufactured every single year so i have done the total here you just have to sum up the figures so 25 plus 20 plus 30 would be 75 so we have to calculate the least so least is in 65 lakhs so 1996 that is the answer so in which of the following years was the percentage production of b type to c type tires the maximum percentage production it is asking so you will have to calculate for both the years for both the types of tires in each in, or every single year and then you can have the figure that would be for 1996 because we have to calculate the maximum one so it is 29 1996 you can see Last question on the basis of this graph is the total production of C type tires in 1992 and 1993 together was what percentage? So it is asking together. So you'll have to sum up first and asking that that figure would be what percentage of the production of B type tires in 1994. So we'll sum up total production of type C tires 50 and for type B it is 27.5. For these two years it is for only C and for B it is for 1994. So we'll have to calculate the percentage then which would be 181% and again the figure is not given in the option. Now here we have the data. So this table is presenting the data related to six educational years, number of students that are taking admission and some of them are also leaving from the institute. So five different schools are there, which are for like it's 1990 is the year. Uh, five different schools. Uh, so here you can see from 1992 to 1997, we have the figures. So these are these schools students taking admission number of students leaving is given according to year so what is the average number of students studying in all the five schools in 1992 so 
mostly it would be either asking you average or percentage or it would be again the difference so that is the simple formula that you will be seeing mostly it would be used in such types of questions so here we have to calculate the average so simply first you'll have to total all the number of students divide by five because there are um, five schools are there so we'll have it as one two zero five then what was the number of students studying in school B in 1994? So number of students studying in school B in 1994 would be number of, you will total the number of students taking admission, total the number of students leaving, and then you'll subtract these two figures to get the number of students who are actually studying. So it is 110. Then uh, the number of students leaving school C from the year 1990 to 1995 is approximately what percentage of the number of students. So I think here it is misrepresentation in the number of years which is given. So that is why if we are calculating only because it is asking for 1995, so we'll calculate from 1992 to 1995. So it would be 20.4%. Then here it is the table which is showcasing the data related to food grain production in a country for a particular year which is 1999. So these are different types of crops which are cultivated and the output states and first question is which state had the highest wheat production. So you can see you just have to see the figure the highest value here it is asking only for wheat production so it is state B is 103 lakh tons and what was the proportion of rice production to wheat production in the country so you have to calculate the ratio so for that firstly you will have to sum up all these values because it is asking proportion of rice and wheat so you will we will be needing the total figure so we'll calculate the ratio and when you will divide and see in terms of decimal it would be 1.2 is to 1 and jawar was the most important food grain in the states which state it was most important so that would be on the basis of the level of output so jawar you can see here um, it would be state q 73 is the highest value over here then states p alone accounted for approximately what percentage of wheat production in the country so we will take the total production in state p divide by the total production of wheat in the country and we'll get the percentage. So state P and wheat. So 103 lakh tons divided by 331. This total value will get it as 30%. Now if the average per hectare yield of rice in the country was 30 tons. So this is the average yield of rice which is given. Then the area under rice cultivation during the year is to be calculated so average is given 30 tons total production we can calculate by summing up all the values and this is the simple formula for average so we have the value of average we have the total production we have to calculate the total area under cultivation so we'll cross multiply and we'll get it as 13 so it is in lakh tons so that is why you can see the difference there so when you will convert into simple figure so it will be 13. Now, previous questions related to data interpretation. So here we have birth rate, death rate, and the decadal time periods. So for which period was the natural growth rate maximum? So simply, we, we should be knowing here that natural growth rate formula is birth rate minus the death rate. So it is asking for which period was it maximum. So you just have to calculate the difference here and the maximum value that you will get it. So it will, you can see that orally if you just have a look at these figures, you have to calculate the difference. So you can see that these are very close figures. So here, the last three ones, you can see that there are more difference or more gap in these two numbers. So we can just calculate specific values for the last three. So it would be 22.3 for 1971 to 81. So it would be maximum during this decade. Now here uh, the graph showcases us the data for uh, different types of steels which are produced over a period of six months of a year 
Now question is asking what was the approximate ratio of sheet steel and scrap steel imports in the first three months of the year. So ratio is to calculate it for only first three months. So total we'll calculate for sheet steel which is you can see is depicted by this pattern of the bar diagrams here. So we'll total that. So it would be 113 and this is given uh, in uh, thousands of tons. So then we'll calculate it similarly total for the scrap steel on the basis of the pattern, which is this. So then we'll have to just calculate the ratio of these two figures. So it would be 1.2 is to 1. Again, same question, but um, same bar graph is there. What was the approximate total value of the sheet steel imported over the six months? So total six months pay average value. So in this case, you can see that we are also given the average cost per ton in the brackets over here for each one of the steel. So total first we'll calculate because it is asking only for the sheet steel total value. Average cost is 256. So we'll simply multiply these two and it would be C option. Same bar graph again. Third question on this. So by how much did the import of sheet steel exceed? the import of coil steel in the first three months of the year. So exceeding, so it means we have to calculate the difference between. So total again, we'll calculate for these two types of steels and difference would be 19 here. So again, now we have to simply interpret the statements which are given here in terms of which is right and wrong. So this uh, again here graph is showcasing us the composition of the tax revenue for a period of two decades. And you can see different types of taxes, both direct and indirect taxes are a part of it. So excise, customs, corporate, personal income tax and service tax. So first statement during the given period, the revenue from direct taxes as a percentage of the gross tax revenue, it has increased. So it is for direct taxes. So direct tax here would be corporate tax and the income tax. So you'll see the trend here. So it is question is stating that it has increased, but you will see that it is declining. For example, for the personal income tax, this dashed line is showcasing. So you can see that it is almost stagnant at the same level. So we can't say it has increased and also corporate tax also if you will have a look so it is increasing here so on this basis when we calculate for both of these in a combined manner so that's how we can say that revenue from direct taxes has increased second half is stating while that of indirect taxes has decreased so you can see it is declining initially you can see here for the customs duty for example it was higher at 35 uh, percent now it has declined so on that basis we can say that this statement is correct Second statement is the trend in the revenue from the excise duty demonstrates that the growth of manufacturing sector has been negative during the given period. So if uh, we can say that if the revenue has been increasing from excise duty, then we can say that there is more growth in manufacturing and vice versa. So it is stating that trend in this it showcases manufacturing has been negative growth so excise duty you can see is this simple straight line so it is declining over a period of time so it is negative and the statement becomes correct so because the revenue has been falling so it showcases the amount of manufacturing or the share has also been somewhere declining so both the statements are correct here now this question, uh, we have per capita income, we have GDP growth rate and the tele density here. Now question, the statement one here is nowadays prosperity of an already high performing state cannot be sustained without making further large investments in the telecom infrastructure. So you just have to correlate these two figures. It is asking growth rate and the tele density. So if you correlate here, we can't say that it is true for every single state over here because for example, if we see, uh, for example, here it is 5.46 is the growth rate, but you can see tele density is at 97.9. So still more states are ahead of state 14. So that's why on this basis, we can say the statement becomes false. 
then second statement is nowadays a very high tele density is most essential so this is kind of an extreme statement it is most essential condition for promoting the business and the economic growth in a state so we can't say that only again generally thinking also that only on the basis of tele density that becomes most essential condition and also only having a look at this data also this cannot be stated so both the statements are incorrect or invalid now uh, same data so another set of statements so higher per capita income is generally associated with higher tele density so it is stating generally associated so it can be true there is a possibility so higher per capita income and higher tele density so you can just again have a correlation between this and this figures so for example per capita income here in these states it is at higher level so you can see that even tele density is also higher so it is stating generally it is not an absolute case so this is true second statement is higher gdp growth rate always ensure higher per capita income now it, it cannot be true so this is absolute because it is stating always so false and then higher gdp growth rate does not necessarily ensure higher tele density this is also a general statement it is not a necessary condition so 1 and 3 are correct now here we have two pie charts so this is showcasing the proportion of literates and illiterates in a country in two different years 1970 and 1990 but for male and female we have division only for the literates not for the illiterates so on that basis on this given data we have to see out of these four which option is most appropriate or it is it is asking us which of these statement is true beyond any doubt so it is asking that that has to be true 100% so if we have a look at the last statement it is saying the ratio of the female literates to the male literates improved significantly over this period so it is true because here you can see it is only asking the question is stating for literates so we have the division between male and female and it is significantly progress you can see from here that they had a very small share in, in during 1970 and their share in terms of literates has increased massively so this is true but it is important to have a look at other statements also so male literacy did not improve over this period we can't say that it has increased by some amount if you see the proportion or the share here and here so uh, second is the proportion of the literate males to the total population of males remained same over the years but again we don't have the division for illiterate so that on that is on that basis we can't say that this is right or wrong so in 1970 half of the illiterates were women but we don't have the division for illiterates between male and female so option b is most appropriate and it is true beyond any doubt so it is a repeated question again so in this case it is given distribution of 1 lakh tourist who visited india during a particular year it is shown so based on these numbers and the pie charts number of japanese tourists below the age of 39 who visited india in the year concerned is so here it is in terms of the country and the share of tourist and here it is in terms of age so it is it, we have to calculate for less than 39 years of age so here it is not it is not 750 it is more than 50 years is 60 proportion 60% is the share amongst 1 lakh tourist so only for japan so first we'll calculate 20% so 20% of 1 lakh would be 20000 and then less than 39 so you can see it is 40 to 49 this is above this would be also above because there is more than 50 so it would be only these two or this area would showcase for less than 39 of uh, age the tourists that are visiting so 10% and 10% so it would be 20% so 20% of 20000 has to be calculated so it would be 4000 and that is what it is asking us we have to calculate number of only japanese tourists so that is why we firstly restricted ourselves to only japanese tourists so calculated this figure first and then as a percentage of the number of japanese tourists
Now here question is asking consider the four age pyramids given below namely A, B, C and D. So these are the age pyramids of different shapes representing four different countries. So which one of them indicates declining population? So declining would be where the birth rate is very less. So you can see the most narrowest birth rate here you, you'll see is in this case. And this is you can see the share of uh, dependent population or the elderly is increasing over here. So C would be the most uh, where would see that there the population is declining amongst all four of them. So following figure it has four curves A, B, C and D and it showcases uh, the year and here it is population. So which curve indicates exponential growth? So it would be D curve. However, we might think that it would be either A or B, but it is exponential. So exponential is suddenly it is spiking up in a very less time period. So you can see up till like this 1800, it was very, it was increasing at a very less rate. And compared to all these other three graphs, it was increasing at a much higher rate. But here you can see a sudden spike. Population is ultimately same in all the four countries. But here you can see the pace is very sharp. So that is why exponential growth is in case of D. Now in, we have again two pie, gra uh, pie charts here. So one is for distribution of disease in town A, another for B. And accordingly, the diseases and the share of people who are suffering from this. So again, what can we say about persons with more than one disease from these graphs? So there are likely to be persons with more than one disease in town A. It can be a possibility, but we can't make this uh, inference 100% because we just have the share of the diseases and the people. So we do not know that what is the overlap or, or other data is not given to us for again so that we can further calculate on this basis. So there are likely to be persons with more than one disease in town B. It can be a possibility in both the towns also. So there are likely to be persons with more than one disease in both the towns also. So I would go by no inference can be drawn here. So Aushik, if you have to like state anything regarding this question, either it would be C or D. But since another, like more data is not given, so I went for no inference can be drawn. Okay, so moving ahead. So another question is, during a party person who was exposed to contaminated water, a few days later he developed fever and loose motion. So he suffered for some days before going to a doctor for treatment. On starting the treatment, he soon became better and recovered completely a few days later. So graph showcases different phases of the person's disease conditions as regions A, B, C, and D and E of the curve. So which region of the curve? indicates that the person began showing the symptoms of infection. So symptoms would be in the very initial stage. So it is above zero. So you can say that A portion would be the one which will showcase that symptoms are beginning to show. Now, in this case, again, we have to decide amongst all these three statements, which is true and which is not. So the graph is showcasing distance here time taken to complete. So there are uh, three athletes here, A, B and C, running side by side for a 30 kilometer race. So race was won by A. Can we say this? We can say this because you can see C is not able to complete. B is completing, but it is taking more time than A. So it is asking that it was won by A. So that is true. It was won by A. Then B was a head mark of A up to 25 kilometer mark. Again, we can say this as true because if we compare A and B, the trajectory that has been followed, so you can see it is crossing. B is crossing at 25 kilometers. So you can say more distance is being covered by B comparatively in less time. So you can see that, for example, for more clarity, in 15 minutes, B had covered more than 15 kilometers, whereas A was again somewhere at five kilometers only so it b was ahead up till 25 kilometers than a so that is why it is correct 
Third is C ran very slowly from the very beginning. So actually C ran very fast in the very beginning. So that is why it is wrong because you can see. मैं A होना चाहिए. C वाले में A ran very slowly. हाँ A होगा. From the very beginning. Hmm. C ran very fast. A was the most slowest. So one and two are correct. Now, uh, here X men working at constant speed do a certain job in Y days. So, which one of these diagram showcases relation between X and Y? So, it is at constant speed. So, constant speed would be always this upward sloping at a constant rate. It is increasing. So, this is a constant um, shape of the graph. So, if it would have been declining, so declining would be this. Now here the graph showcases the average profit of two fruit sellers A and B in thousands per year from this time period. So in which year is the average profit of both of them is same? So it would be where both these curves would intersect. So it is you can see here nineteen ninety six both the curves are intersecting. So the average profit becomes same for nineteen ninety six. So these are all the questions. Based on data interpretation, which have been asked in the UPSC CSAT paper, so far, so that's all for the day. Thank you so much for joining us on Ansar Kari, and stay tuned for further videos on CSAT.